order, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone, to the July 9th Village Board Meeting. First item on the agenda is our County Legislator, Joel Tyner. Sir, I hand out this evening. Um, first thing is I wanted to invite you all. Uh, usually, this meeting, the Randbeck Village Board meeting, happens after uh, the committee day each month and after the full board meeting. It's a little bit unusual because of the 4th of July. Um, I can actually tell you what's going to be on the agenda. This Thursday is the monthly committee meeting. All, all the different six committees are meeting. And this coming Monday is the full board meeting of the legislature. So I'm not going to run through all the dozens of items, but just a few things you might be interested in. There was a man named uh, Bob Sears from LaGrange, a former Republican County legislator. He and I were working strongly uh, about a, uh, a decade ago to try to keep item pricing in Dutchess County. Uh, so that if you go into the Stop and Shop in Rhinebeck or any of the supermarkets in the county, uh, it's a law that, you know, you see the stickers, uh, the, the, the prices marked on the items. Unfortunately, as far as I'm concerned, some people in the county legislature have been really working hard, uh, sadly, over the last year to repeal this law. Uh, I thought that their efforts had been beaten back, so to speak, but I was sort of chagrined to see that is back on the agenda this Thursday. Uh, it's not maybe the most exciting or interesting issue on the planet. It's not like the world is going to come to an end if this law is repealed. But if you care about senior citizens, if you care about consumer protections, and frankly, if you care about jobs, because if you look at what uh, UFCW, United Food and Commercial Workers, have uh, advocated on, written about this in Massachusetts and Michigan and all over the country, supermarkets lay people off. When these item pricing laws are repealed, there's layoffs. We're still in the worst recession we've been in in the last 70 or 80 years. So I know you guys are doing great work here on the Rhinebeck Village Board. That's your priority. It makes a big difference if anybody calls or emails or comes to speak out. It makes a huge difference if you, now maybe you might disagree with me. No matter how you feel about the issue, feel free to come speak up. That's this Thursday, 4.45 p.m on the sixth floor of the county office building, okay? You can call 486-2100. You can email all 25 of us, county legislators, at duchessny.gov. Uh, another couple things, the Poughkeepsie Journal has done many editorials over the last decade for well testing. You know, so when properties change hands, the water's not poisoned, or at least people know, the buyer knows that the water's poisoned. And um, that is back on the agenda for this Thursday at 445. Um, I spoke with somebody at Smith Labs recently on Route 9. MTB is still being found all over the county. This is nine years after the stuff was being banned from being put into our gasoline. Methyl, tertiary, butyl ether, <coughs> nasty, carcinogenic, toxic additive. You see 99G, the Getty station, you know, tanks dug up again. Well, six months after MTB was banned, the Dutchess County Health Department itself found MTB contamination. <laughs> it's nasty stuff. Uh, Rockland, Westchester counties, they have this law under Republican county executives. One third of the time, they're finding contamination. I talked to real estate brokers. They say that about half the time, the water is found to be contaminated uh, when tests are done. Tests are not always done. So if you care about that, please come. Also, Drayton Grant recently passed away. One of the issues she was pushing me hard on for years was neighbor notification for pesticide application. Just 48 hours notice before pesticides are going to be sprayed within 150 <clears throat> feet. Not talking about banning pesticides, which plenty of places have done in Canada. This is just 48 hours notice before pesticides are sprayed. You know, make sure the laundry is brought in, the toys, the kids are protected, the pets. Um, you could spend about seven and a half years looking at all the research documenting the links between pesticides and cancer. So if you care about any of that stuff, come out, speak up, whatever your mind is, this coming Thursday, 445, 64 the county office building. Dr. David, last night was the Democratic uh, Legislature Caucus, also the Republican Caucus. Dr. David Conklin, the president of the college, was making his presentations to the two caucuses. He pointed out the same thing he's pointed out for many years, that Dutchess County, the sponsor share, the percentage of community college funding that comes from county government in here in Dutchess is at the bottom of the barrel compared to you look at other counties in the Hudson Valley. That's just a simple fact. 
And he was pretty emphatic about that when he shared that with us. Uh, the last thing I'll say is, uh, well, uh, real quickly, today's Poughkeepsie Journal has a, uh, a letter to the editor from Dr. Kenneth Liegner from Pauling. This whole thing about the Lyme debate, unfortunately, nobody in the media reported it four years ago. Hardly anybody reported it. I got a resolution passed almost unanimously. Even the Republicans agreed chronic Lyme disease is real. Health insurance needs to cover it. It's still an issue. Um, I think that the Dutchess County Health Commissioner and anybody who's on the Dutchess County Board of Health really needs to take this issue seriously and not play games with the CDC and the uh, Infectious Diseases Society of America. So that stuff is on the agenda. We should be approving yes or no for the health commissioner. That's not on the agenda this month. I don't know why. There's something going on with the Board of Health related to this issue. Last but not least, the, uh, the forum uh, flyer that I handed out, you're all welcome to come join me uh, Wednesday, July 24th at 6 o'clock, Rhinebeck Town Hall, just across the way. And uh, I've been doing a lot of research in a lot of years uh, trying to point out how much we could save tax dollars and actually create jobs. I don't know if I reported this to you at last month's meeting. I actually got another resolution passed unanimously for Dutchess County to follow the SolarizeMadison.com example. Madison County, Genesee County, Tompkins County, it's basically a 25% discount on solar installation uh, for municipalities, homeowners, and businesses if the county planning department pursues it. We passed the resolution unanimously, my idea. Hopefully the county planning department's gonna purchase it. Anyway. You guys have been very patient. I have to run to the Clinton uh, town board meeting, which started about 10 minutes ago. I'm at 876-2488, uh, willing to talk about all these issues. Again, Wednesday, July 24th, 6 o'clock, Rhinebeck Town Hall. Happy, happy summer. Thanks, Joel. <coughs> okay, department reports, wastewater. Grant's not here. Uh, wastewater treated was 3.87 million gallons. Gallons of sludge processed, 46,700 gallons. Pounds of sludge processed, 5,483. Cubic yards of sludge processed, 25.2. MNO sanitation hall, 28,500 gallons of sludge. And the reason for that, of course, is because of the new sludge press installation. Uh, Ferrochloride used 126 gallons, lime used 700 pounds. In relation to the sludge press, uh, it is supposed to be tested. They were going to test it sometime today. So the test should be completed here this week, and we should be up and running. And uh, glad to see that come to a successful conclusion. Any questions? Okay. Water department, Heinz. Um, we had net uh, treated water this month of June of 13,379,000 gallons. Uh, we also finished the, uh, the water plant emergency recovery plan, and thanks to, to Lisa here, who did a yeoman's job uh, getting it done at night, we had to reformat the, the, um, the, the thing and uh, completely rewrite it in many ways. Uh, the water plant is ready for painting, uh, for the paint crew, which they're going to show up somewhere in the early part of the first week in August. As far as the distribution system is concerned, uh, we replaced an aging uh, fire hydrant uh, and, and a valve on Route 308. Uh, had to take two tries to do that. Um, but before we do any more uh, hydrants uh, in, in the future, we have to do uh, quite a number of valves to, to upgrade. We did two today on South Street and Route 9, and we have to do additional ones up uh, on Route 9 and Platt Ab Avenue. Uh, a lot, lot of these valves uh, are compromised, they either don't turn on or don't turn off. Uh, I did some research in terms of our uh, distribution system here and found that uh, the earliest part of it uh, was uh, started in 1897, between 1897 and 1899. And uh, I will make a map of this. Uh, I have a map of it already, but uh, I will consult with uh, uh, some former village officials to, uh, uh, to, to, to look for the extent of this system and then want to go out and test it. What we dug up today was uh, a, uh, uh, some pipes, four inch and six inch pipes, which looked uh, tuberculated quite a, quite a bit. And I expect that the others are as well. Uh, I requested and received a uh, hydrant uh, flow testing uh, work plan from uh, our village engineer, and uh, we'll use that in the next uh, few months to, to get started on that, but I want to first uh, also uh, map the old system out. And then what I plan to do here is to uh, 
to, to test pressure and residual, residual pressure and flow rates of uh, some of the old systems. Uh, I sent a letter of intent to the Hazard Mitigation Grant Program, uh, which is run by the uh, New York State Office of uh, Emergency Management, to get hopefully reimbursed for some of the 180k that we spend on relocating the uh, South Parsonage uh, uh, water main pipe that was uh, compromised uh, through uh, Irene. I have done some additional work on, uh, on electric power reduction initiatives, and what I uh, first, I want to tell you what what happened on the uh, uh, on our solar panels here. I have some I have some copies to, to give you. Essentially, what we have on our system, our solar systems, we have two. Uh, two data loggers on there. The first data, data logger is uh, called is, is uh, supplied by Enphase, and what that uh, what that logger does it, it actually uh, looks at the uh, uh, status of the system, and it's uh, essentially a diagnostic tool to to locate failures and so on, and it pro provides also a rough estimate of the amount of power uh, that the system has generated. It's off. It's about five. 95% accurate or so. The second system is a locus system, which is much more uh, accurate, and uh, that actually reports uh, the, uh, the the power produced and the power consumed. And if you look at this, uh, what they give you here, you can see the first page is a daily printout of uh, the amount of power produced and power consumed of the village hall here. Uh, the, next, the next page is a, uh, is a monthly summary going back from uh, 620 when, when I repaired the system uh, to 631 and it shows <coughs> for that part, it shows that we uh, generated uh, 1,000 a, a uh, kilowatt hours, uh, 1,100 kilowatt hours and consumed about 1,600 kilowatt hours. The third one here is uh, the t total uh, dollars saved uh, during that time period uh, after we fixed af after uh, the, the, uh, the system got got brought back on board, and uh, it looked like we saved about uh, say 190 dollars in from the period of uh, 620 to 630. What I want to do is uh, give you for the next two months just a, a monthly update of what, what the system is does, and then I want to do it quarterly if, that, if that's what you want, want done, otherwise I, okay? Good job. Mm -hmm. So, that's one Thank thing. You. Welcome. Oh, yes, and uh, from December 2011 till today, uh, we saved about $7,300 uh, on, on that system. And that's based on 16 kilo so about a year and a half. Year and a half, a bit, yeah, year and a half. Of course, December was virtually nothing in January, mm -hmm. uh, a low production month. But uh, we saved about $7,300, and uh, uh, and yeah, that was oh, yeah based on 16 cents a kilowatt hour. Now the 16 cents is not something that is constant, you know, it changes. changes. I just, I went to the, to the website from uh, Central Hudson and looked at what their two-year average was, and two-year average was 16 cents. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, while I was working on this uh, 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 solar data reporting system with a fellow from uh, Menino Electric, uh, name was, is, uh, is Chris Fone, uh, I said, you know, I found out that NYSERDA gives uh, grants for larger installations, anything over 500 kilowatt hours. And uh, uh, he and I went, sat down and, and, and looked over maps and said, where, is, uh, where are there potentials in, in, the, in the village additional to what we have up here? It turns out uh, that there's not too much funding available for smaller systems. The, the one that NYSERDA uh, is funding is one for 500 kilowatt hours, which would work very well for the water plant. Uh, the problem here is that we don't have enough land to build such a system. We, uh, if we figured out that we need about six to seven acres to put solar panels up there to drive, to drive the water plant. Okay, so that, that's a, that's a no-go. We looked at the, uh, the garage again. 
And that would work because there's a lot of land there. The problem there is that we would have to put it on the other side of the of the creek and have to follow, have to cross the, the power cable to, uh, over the creek. But also, it's in the floodplain. I mean, if you if you remember during uh, the last uh, uh, mm -hmm. storm, we were it had water almost up in, into the roof. Uh, other places I looked at was the uh, police department here. And I said, man, that's a beautiful roof and so on. Except when I took a picture, I saw all these trees out there, and the trees are right in the south of the, the, south oh, of the so side, side that we would want to use. use. So, so that, that wasn't doing uh, any good. And the same thing with the, uh, uh, the wastewater plant. There's no, no land there at all. So, so we, gave, uh, we gave essentially up on this, and so there's nothing to do. Uh, I have a uh, request from, from Tom Wallbank to uh, our uh, uh, <coughs> senior water, water uh, uh, operator uh, to uh, give a, uh, Justin Tratnik a uh, out of title pay for three days starting July 1st. And I guess I have to make a motion to... July 1st or August 1st? Uh, no, J July 11th, I'm sorry. July 11th to, uh, and the, the following three days. Three days. So uh, I have to make a motion, I guess, to... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, to to uh, bestow a uh, out of title pay to uh, Justin Trapnik uh, for three days starting July 11th. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? You familiar with what we're talking about? Or less. It's part of the union contract. You can uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Okay. Um, I have one more item here, Jim, and that has to, that we may not want to do that here, but a discussion on credit cards. Uh, we have in the water department uh, uh, one or two customers to, that have used credit cards in the past, uh, maybe once in, in a year. And when another customer came in and wanted to have uh, a payback credit card, uh, the, the company wouldn't accept them. Didn't know what was the credit card problem was us. It turned out to be us because we hadn't used it for so many years. And uh, so, so they just shut us down. Uh, I had philosophical problems with that, but that is not the business for, 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 for this discussion over here to, to have credit cards in, in, the, uh, uh, in, in, in this kind of a, in environment here. But there are different areas here, and I think what I wanted to talk to you about is to, to have uh, really a, uh, uh, what, what we want to do as a village in terms of credit card. We have the, the water department that we have people pay by credit cards. We have the mulch. You, the people could pay by credit card, which probably would be a good thing. Uh, pl uh, planning and zoning uses uh, use has a lot of. Uh, I, I don't think they use credit cards, but they. Well, would you, if you're in favor of setting up the credit card system, just make a motion to that effect. Well, but I, I wanted to have it on a broader on a broader basis on the village, but not just for the water <coughs> department. We could do that. Okay. Right now, we're talking about the water and the sewer bills. If that's yes. if you want people to have that ability just to make, mo make a motion to that effect, and then we can okay. look at the other options for payment for other departments. We yeah, have to set that up. Or taxes for that. Matter. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I want to make a motion that we, uh, I was first against it before I became for it. <laughs> yeah. Well, until you found out how it actually works. Well, no, no, uh, uh, well, uh, there's... Uh, just make the motion. Uh, let, let me make, yeah, we can discuss it then. then. I want to make a motion to... Uh, uh, Accept the credit card payments for uh, for the water and sewer deposit. Second. Any discussion? Do we yeah. uh, pay a fee? Well, to the credit okay, card yeah. Company? Well, we the, 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 the concern I had were manifold. First of all, the, the, there's a fee attached to it. I think it's like two and a half percent. Before uh, that we gets, don't a, pay. we don't pay that. That gets uh, right on the on the on the, uh, on the person who, who charges uh, to get uh, to get charged for that right away. Uh, the good part is that within two or three days, uh, the money is in the in our account. Okay. The bad part is, uh, in my mind, is we, we collect the money for late fees and so on, and uh, we would we lose that. Ability. Now we have we are not at risk here in, at all because well, yes. Why is it a problem if we're paid on time? That is not a problem. That is wonderful. The problem is that there's, so a, lot, the there's a lot of people the because there's a lot of people who pay late. Right, but if people pay on time, time that's that, what we want. That's what we. We want. don't want them to pay late, late even if yeah. we get a late fee. Yeah. 
but we're still it, waiting for our money. We've provided a service yeah. that we've already paid for. Right, but eventually we, we, we recoup all that money for, for, for late fees. And if people don't pay at all... Uh, having been in my own business for 25 years, I would much rather somebody pay their bill on time than me have to collect a late fee. Okay. Okay. That's it. <laughs> So, so that, uh, so, so that is uh, that was as far as I were concerned was was a downside. Additionally, you know, I, the credit cards are slippery slope, but everybody's doing it these days. So, that's my my. Okay, point so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Wait, wait, wait. Are we? Uh, is this to accept credit card payments for yes. everything? No, 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 no water just the water insurance. Right so, oh, we're going to we're going to reactivate it. Is. We had it; it was yes. deactivated right. for yeah. lack of usage. Yeah. We're going to react. And, and Jim has, uh, I have to form you, and Jim has to sign it. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Go aye. aye. Opposed? So voted. Is that it, Hunch? That, that is it for me. Okay. Fire department. <clears throat> All right, the call report for June for EMS, we had uh, 22 in the town, 25 in the village for a total of 47. Fire calls, uh, 17 in the town, 8 in the village for a total of 25. Uh, motor vehicle, 5 in the town, 0 in the village, uh, leaving a total of 5. Um, total June calls, 44 in the town, 33 in the village, and 77 overall. Uh, year to date is uh, 247 for the town, 232 for the village, and 478 grand total. Um, there are no new uh, firefighters this month. Um, the dryer that uh, was approved for purchase should be uh, installed this week or uh, next week. Uh, the last, well, the next thing on here is the um, the washer. They're looking at. Uh, a washer to uh, wash the gear that goes along would go along with the dryer that's already been purchased. I uh, left uh, a quote there from uh, Gouch. Um, we did look at the state bid. Um, John Gay did most of the work on that, and I met with him and the chief on it. The state contract uh, is a hard mount uh, machine, um, which has to be bolted to the floor, and it has to have a floor drain, a gravity drain on it. The uh, base price for that is uh, 2208, uh, which that's all that's quoted uh, in the state bid. And then on top of that, they got another quote that included some of the additionals um, requiring the base for it to be mounted on. Installation brings the total up to about 3300. And on top of that, that doesn't include the plumbing or the electric, which would they would need to chisel out and put in a floor drain to tie into the current floor drain specific for um, the washer and it would also need to have 220 service which isn't uh, currently in place um, also doesn't include a soap uh, dispenser um, which i guess would control the control the usage and make sure they have the appropriate amount which brings us to the uh, quote here from um, gouge which is the uh, 20 pound and this is a soft mount which is more similar to what we have in a house, you know, with the, the cushioning on it can sit anywhere and it's got the pump, so it pumps out into the slop sink that they already have there. It runs on a 110, which is available uh, currently, so this would kind of be um, put it in Seamless place. Transmission, transition. Yeah, put it in place, ready to go on day one with no additional cost involved, but does the cost comes out to be about, you know, just under $1,000 more than the state bid, but it eliminates that um, the cost of modif on site modifications. So I would like to make a motion to uh, move forward with uh, the quote that you have here in front of you for $4,325 for the uh, turnout gear washer. Is there a second? A second. Discussion? Yeah, you said um, you have to hook into a drain. The um, this one, the soft mount, will have, uh, you know how a regular household washer has the hose that comes out of the back and it's a pump that feeds it? Right. That This one will have that so it can just dump into the existing slop oh, sink. okay. So you don't have to dig up the floor? No, this is kind of ready to go price, whereas okay. the other one, you'd need to buy a kit to mount it on top of the floor and then install a floor drain that mm -hmm. would sit underneath of it. Because the floor drain now is, 
what, four feet off the wall or something, and you'd want the machine what, what up against the wall. What would cut a hole in the concrete yeah. and then run plumbing from the back of the washer that would come out to the existing floor drain. Right. So you'd have a piece of plumbing coming out onto the floor in front of the machine, which you know, can create a tripping hazard. Right, but now with this one, you don't have to do that. Yeah. No, okay. Yeah. There's less extra cost yeah. going this way. Right. Okay, that's it. Any more Thank discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. You want to do the insurance now, Heath, or you want to do that under other business? We can wait to other business. I did have one other question, though. They were asking about with the installation of the uh, washer, it's going to displace some of the um, stuff that's in there for storage, and they were inquiring about usage of the, the, the outbuilding there that the police are currently moving things out of into the basement. Uh, what are they? What are they looking to store? I mean, I don't have an inventory. If you go in that building, it can't be very important. You know, just right. try to get a feel for them, what they want to put yeah. in there. Okay. You know, and what building we'll is that again? I'm one sorry. of the cell they, tower buildings yeah. that the police were using, yeah. and the police have vacated. Yeah. Yeah. They were in the process over a weekend of, yeah. of vacating. So. Yeah. I would just find out what they want to put in there. Okay. That's it? That's it. Okay. Street Department, Howie? Yes, uh, two hazardous trees were removed, um, one on South Street and the other one on Astor Drive. These trees were not um, recommended by the Tree Commission last month, but they came up as being hazardous trees. Um, the uh, Mike, Mike noticed them, and I think you went to see the one on Astor Drive, right, Jim? The, mm -hmm. the one where the one limb fell off and yep. the tree was in danger of falling over Astor Drive and possibly taking out the electric for the uh, sewer department. So that one was removed, and so was the one on South Street, right over here in the corner. Wastewater. Wastewater department, sorry. Anthony's going to be mad at you, Maybe he, doesn't, maybe he <laughs> won't notice. <laughs> anyway, we're trying to protect Anthony's wastewater department. <laughs> and then the other tree was over here on the corner of South and Route 9. I actually took a picture of that, if anybody wants to see it, the bottom part of it. You saw it? It was all yeah. rotted out. Mm -hmm in danger of falling. Which one was that happening? Right here in the corner of South Street and uh, Route 9. Oh, the one that broke on Memorial Day we got? No, 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 another no. one on the other side. They would have there. broken up in the next one. North storm. of that a little yeah. bit. Yeah. It was on the same person's property. Yep. It was hollowed okay. out. Yeah. Okay. And um, also the one that was approved by the uh, Tree Commission on Mulberry Street, I believe that was mm -hmm. 38 Mulberry? Yep. Uh, that was taken down also. Dr. Gershon's house. Mm-hmm. Okay, the firehouse door should be installed in the next few weeks. That's the, we're replacing the back doors here on the fire department. There are old wooden doors down there. We're installing new insulated doors. And uh, John Romando from the highway department has been working on painting these door frames out here in the front and in the back. Uh, heavy downpours has shown us that some of the drain lines can't handle the amount of water that comes with some of these storms. The one happened yesterday. Uh, West Market, West Chestnut, and Chestnut Street flooded from rain volume. And uh, la a few weeks ago, we opened the gate valves to lower the water level on Crystal, Crystal Lake due to avoid the flooding. And that worked very well, Jim. That was one of our major first time we really tested that. Well, I wouldn't say it's the first time we tested it. Last year, we had opened them and drained the lakes, lake significantly, but we never got any rain. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this time, we got the rain. And this time uh, we didn't. The water didn't back up. Yeah. You know, it, uh, by opening the valves, it never, it never drained below the spillway, but it never went over the sidewalls at the spillway either. So, mm. uh, how are we on that uh, intersection of uh, West uh, Chestnut Street and uh, where, where Wookiees? Yes. Things, that, that particular pipe that goes directly uh, in, into the and into the main under Route Nine. I, I have a sense that this thing is either not clean or it's too small. It's too small. It's too small. So, so, you know, that it's not probably a big deal to, to fix that for, this, for, this, for the highway department. They have, well, they have to cut maybe 30 or 40 feet. The problem is the main on Route 9 is too small. We can't yeah. get the water away quick enough. Yeah, no, but but that wasn't that was actually working. That uh, Route 9 was not the problem. It was where the water uh, collected was right on... Uh, 
and west uh, right because chestnut. it can't drain it, off onto Route Nine, nine because nine, of the volume right, of water going on. Right. Route nine. So, but but I think it's a, it's it's a problem with the pipe, the size of the pipe from from uh, West Chestnut to Route Nine. So what's happening? I just the volume of water cannot be taken away quick enough, so it backs up into Chestnut Street. Mm -hmm. West Chestnut right. and Chestnut and Street Chestnut. both got flooded. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. But and it, what we have is too small a diameter pipe on Route 9 taking the water away. So it backs up into those areas. Because I did Increasing not the size of the pipe on Chestnut or West yeah. Chestnut isn't going to help the problem any. No, but, but in previous uh, situations, I, I thought we had, we had actually the water collecting on Route 9 into the pipes and it wouldn't go, but this didn't happen this time. Well, we cleaned, we cleaned, cleaned, we cleaned the Route 9 out oh, last year, right. which has helped some. But so when we get those high volume downpours yes. like we had last night, yeah. where we had one earlier this spring, like yeah. Keith and I were out. Oh, we had, we had one uh, two weeks ago. The fire commissions. Uh -huh. uh, you know, when we have those types of storm events, our drainage system is just inadequate to, to get the water away quick enough. But the one thing I noticed, Heinz, was down by the Village Green, there's a storm drain there. Yeah. That was not clogged up. That's right. But everything in the back was. Yeah. Everything in the back, back of where? Everything back of that was, was all flooded. Well, the drain, the, the fact that the drain's not plugged up is a good indication that the drain is working. But the problem is, is that the pipe underneath the road is not big enough to handle the volume of, you know, you have, we, we know how the drainage system works. It goes mm -hmm. from West Chestnut and Ch Chestnut Street and feeds to Route yeah. 9 and then goes up Route 9 yeah. and all the way along Route 9 are more catch basins dumping mm -hmm. water into this thing. Mm -hmm. All right. So once the pipe is full of water, it's not going to take any more water, so it's going to back up to the farthest point away. Yeah, but why aren't the storm drains on, in, in Village Green and going on to Locust Grove? Because it's Grove, downstream from it. They're not, they're not backed up. They were not backed up. It's, it's no. downstream. Could there be a clog between that one and the one before Which it? Which way does well, it flow? Well, the only way to know if there's a clog is to put a camera in there. Yeah. You know? But Which way my belief is that we just, for those, those significant storm events, we have an inadequate drainage system, period. And unless we enlarge it, there's nothing we can do about it. And that's why we're looking at West Market Street, putting bigger catch basins and bigger pipes yeah. in. Well, there, yeah, in that particular area, when we had a heavy rain about two weeks ago, there were sheets of water flowing down Oak Street, mm -hmm. you know, going right into the uh, uh, into West Market Street. Mm -hmm. and it was it was awful. Was that clogged? No, it wasn't clogged. I didn't it, think it, it was. Didn't, it didn't. Flood. It's just not big enough to take the water away. That's the problem no, but, we have. But that one wasn't. That, the, even the, yesterday it wasn't. I don't back that. The drainage system we have is not designed for the amount of water we're shedding to it now. It was designed 70 or 80 years ago, whenever it was put in the ground. Yeah. We didn't have the number of buildings or houses or blacktop. You know, there was more ground to absorb the water. Where does it terminate? Where does uh, it dump it? It goes all the way up behind Bob Finnell's house yes. and then cut makes a corner, uh, uh, makes a cut in behind Steve Melly's house and dumps out behind, uh, and uh, down by the Woods condominiums. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you know. before you get there, before you get to mm -hmm. this. I know what you mean. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, mulch, we're all sold out of mulch. Um, we're planning on uh, grinding the uh, the uh, brush that we have down there now. And uh, Mike got a quote for 7500 to grind up the uh, the uh, stuff we have down there. So I have to make a motion for that to, to approve that. You want to grind the mulch? Make the motion. I make a motion that we grind the... Uh, that's not the mulch, it's the, uh, the trees and the... Grind the brush. The brush. Grind the brush. To make the mulch for seventy-five hundred dollars, I know last year it was ten thousand dollars. Second. We got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Why is the air conditioner not on? I don't know. Because of the sound in the cameras. You won't it's be able hot. to hear us on TV. It's hot in here. <laughs> okay. Uh, Equipment two-wheel drive backhoe was repaired twice this month. Uh, the garbage truck broke down, so we had to send it out for repair. And in Blacktop, well, they have been cutting out the bad spots in the roads and fixing the road base and resurfacing. That's it for Mike's report. 
You were talking about a tree commission before. Are you done with that? Because there was no, we didn't do tree, tree commission. commission yet. Yet. I'm sorry. Tree commission isn't done until later. Oh. That's under uh, committee reports. Um, Jim, did you want to talk about the uh, yes. big bellies? Uh, we had authorized the uh, uh, Tom Mannix putting together the uh, package for us for. Uh, repaving South Parsons Street, which he has completed. So now what we have to do is authorize going out to bid. Uh, he had submitted here an invitation to bid, which is going to be put in the paper. But what my suggestion is we're going to need to fine tune this a little bit because it's awful big. It's going to cost a lot of money. It's got too much information in it. I think what we need to do is shorten it just so that it says that we're going to advertise for resurfacing of uh, South Parsons Street and that interested parties may pick up the bid package at Village Hall and leave it at that because the last time we did one what was the one we did last week Lisa oh we did the thing for uh, the water suit the for water uh, job water. posting yeah the waste it water. went from three hundred dollars to a thousand dollars depending upon the size of it really so yeah you need to when you do these you have to make them as short as possible because you end up paying by the line right yes and that how it worked so I'll talk to Tom about this tomorrow but what I would like to do is make a motion to authorize uh, going out to bid for South Parsons Street. Second. Any discussion? Tom who? Or Tom? Tom Maddox. Maddox. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. And just so everybody's aware, it's going to be sent out to bid in phase one and phase two. Phase one would be 1,500 feet starting at East Market Street and going south, and then uh, phase two would be from that point where that ended, going the rest of the way south to Mill Street. Uh, the Big Belly. We have uh, uh, permission from the post office, from the uh, postmaster to place one on post office uh, property where that alleyway is between the Beekman Arms. And, I, you know, I had gotten the survey so we could verify where the property line is and we, we can locate it on the post office property. So the question here is, I, I'll make a motion that we authorize the purchase of another big belly. I need a second. Second. All right. Discussion. Uh, we don't have, we didn't budget for that in this year's budget, correct? But what we had done the last two years or three years, we had budgeted for two. And yeah. We only bought one per year. Right, right. We put three in, right? Yeah, we've put three in. Yeah. So there was money that was budgeted in the past that never got spent. So that's in the, sitting in the fund balance. So now. it's sitting in the fund balance now. Okay. So that's where the money would come from. And the money the is how much? Six, six. About six thousand. Mm -hmm. And then we have to install it. But over there is not a major problem because there's blacktop there. Yeah, but the highway department does that, right? Right. Yeah. Yep. The location so, is out by the sidewalk, or where? Correct. Okay. Yeah. You know how the. There's those yep. wooden posts with the mm -hmm. chain on it. It would be right inside that, close to the sidewalk. Perfect location. Has exposure to the south and southeast for the sun. Uh, it's away from the street, so you know a vehicle can't back into it. So it's perfect location. Is that sitting under the trees there, right? No. No? No. It's in the sun. Mm -hmm. I make sure of that before well, I Well, it, it probably doesn't location. matter because it needs daylight. That's probably sufficient. Well, you can. You don't want to put one underneath a tree, tree. or it's going to be shaded all I the time. I just have a sense that there are trees along there. Well, there's trees out along the street, street. but right. this is back from the street, yeah. and it, okay. that whole lawn space is open, you know, so it'll function. So I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. All right. That's it, Howie, for Street Department. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're not going to talk, talk about it yet. Uh, planning and zoning. Uh, I have on here a resolution for sidewalks on Montgomery Street as part of the site plan approval for Northern Dutchess Hospital expansion. Uh, there was a public hearing about the hospital last week. Uh, Heinz was there, I was there, Heath was there. Howie came up after his tree commission meeting. And basically, I had polled all of you guys, of course, previously asking what your feelings were about a sidewalk on the north side of Montgomery Street on the hospital campus. And I feel it's important due to our vision and our uh, idea of making the village as 
pedestrian friendly as possible that that campus be fully connected uh, so that people don't have to uh, cross the street more than one time or in a dangerous location and that every one of those hospital properties has access with a sidewalk. So uh, the planning board, when I brought this up, there was discussion and there was a little back and forth between myself and the, uh, the, the landscape architect. And the planning board wanted to know, John Clark asked the question, if I was speaking myself or if I was speaking on behalf of the board. And I expressed to him that I had polled you, you guys and that the majority of the board was in favor of the sidewalk connection. And I said, if you would like a resolution, I certainly will ask the board for a resolution. And he said that would be helpful. So I am going to make a motion that uh, we submit a resolution in favor of this sidewalk being installed as part of the site plan for Northern Duchess Hospital's expansion. I second it, Mark. Hawkins has got a second. Any discussion? I Go ahead. Specify it goes all the way to the end of Correct. the property mm -hmm. by the farmhouse and everything. Correct. Okay. Yep. So make sure it's all in there. Mm -hmm. I think it's important because if you're going to have the sidewalk in front on Route 9, you can't just have that sidewalk end right there because you can't cross the street there safely. Well, so it has to come down and go to the, uh, I know you want to go past that, but there is, a, there is a walkway there. As I explained to them, you know, we have people that may come from uh, the woods, Wells Manor, mm -hmm. Village Green, and they want to, may want to just go visit a friend at the Thompson House. All right? So basically they have to cross in the, in the crosswalk that's on Montgomery Street now, which is going to stay there, uh, and walk through a parking lot, which they admitted in their site plan presentation to us that all their heavy delivery trucks use that road and go down through that parking lot. So it's just not a good situation. So I think that I expressed to them, I think it's bad planning and short-sighted to uh, not put this sidewalk in. And again, uh, the other thing I mentioned, what happens in the wintertime? You yeah. know? Now you've got snow piled up on both sides of the road. You have Montgomery Street. If somebody walks past the Baptist home and goes down towards Hogs Bridge, and then they want to cross over the street, not in the crosswalk, they have to climb over a snowbank, or they have to go out of a driveway entrance to another driveway entrance. So it's just, to me, it needs to be there. And they previously agreed to do the Route 9 section? Correct. That Correct. And they previously we... agreed because the planning board asked them. Okay. And I had asked the planning board to ask them for the Montgomery Street one, but they did not. I was just wondering if we should include that in the resolution that it just includes from one end of their property all the way to the other. It's already in the, the drawings it's for Route yeah. 9. All right. Yeah. Okay. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Police and court. Uh, I am going to, we, we are in process of hiring a new officer. Uh, Pete had interviewed a uh, fellow, Chris Cuddyback, a uh, young gentleman, uh, great resume. He works for the uh, uh, Millerton Police Department on a part-time basis now, and he's looking for more work. So uh, I met with him and talked with him, uh, a very nice young man. So I'm going to make a motion to appoint Chris Cutterback as an officer for the Rhinebeck Police Department, and that's in conjunction with Pete Dunn's recommendation as the officer in charge. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? You interviewed him? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep, I met with him at the station two weeks ago. So it's, as long as we approve it tonight, then Pete just has to go through the formality of getting all the equipment and the uniforms okay. and all of that. Uh, Pete went through his normal process he does for any new hire. We had uh, uh, a vacancy there? Or? Yeah. We have, actually, we have two vacancies. Two vacancies. Okay. Where does he work again? He was working for Millerton right oh. now. Uh, his father, and actually his father worked for, for the sheriff's office too. Pete knows his dad from the sheriff's office. So, so we have a motion and a second. All over? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Okay, uh, the incident report, kind of interesting. You guys are all aware of the press release that I had sent out regarding illegal parking issues and infringement on the handicapped crosswalks and the no parking here, the corner signs. The month of June, we wrote a total of 98 tickets for infringement. Uh, 1202A2B is within 20 feet of a crosswalk, which means they're painted inside the yellow, or they're parking inside the yellow lines. 
1202A1D means they're actually parked on the crosswalk in the white striped area. So if you look at your incident reports, you'll see the, the codes on the right-hand column, and it'll indicate to you what the violation was for. And then the illegal parking is any place where we have a sign that says here to corner or no parking near the driveway, such as the savings bank plaza entrance. Uh, so when you see illegal parking, that's what those are. So like I said, for the month of June, 98 total tickets. Quite obvious we have a problem. Uh, I think it's starting to tail off, but nonetheless, we're still pursuing it. Pete has scheduled uh, some officers to continue the enforcement uh, this month, and we'll just see how it plays out over the next couple months here. Dog report. We got anything, Lisa? Nope. No. Committee reports. Trees. Howie? Yes, everybody get the... Oh, wait a minute. We didn't do planning and zoning, did we? No. No. Oh, yeah. We did the resolutions for the sidewalks, but I didn't talk to you about Bob's report. No. Uh, Rich and I had met with Bob about this issue with the illegal signage. Uh, you know, people just... Repeated offenders, the same people all the time putting signs out, and now what it's leading to is uh, almost like a, an explosion in people taking advantage of the situation, and putting tables and chairs out on the sidewalk. I, over the weekend, was walking on the sidewalk from uh, Route 9 in front of Village Pizza, and there was a table with three chairs there, and one chair was out into the sidewalk. The person had their back facing and there's a tree well that goes around the tree there, and it left about that much space between this person's chair and the, uh, the tree well. So clearly, the sidewalk accessibility is not what it should be. They're impeding the, the sidewalk. So uh, Bob has sent letters to the people that we had issues with. There were a couple of other people that we noted today that need to be sent letters. And Rich had met with myself and Bob, and what our plan is here now, if somebody's a repeat offender, they're going to be cited and we're going to take them to court. Uh, we need to get a handle on this. And, uh, uh, you know, I've said it before that, you know, people will want to come to Rhinebeck because it has a certain character and it looks a certain way. And if we just let this thing run rampant and uh, don't manage it the way it should be managed, we're going to end up with a a different looking community and we're going to only have problems. It's going to create a problem for a business owner, it's going to create a problem for a property owner, and it's going to create a problem from for, from the village perspective as far as liability issues. So uh, we're going to continue to work on it. Jim, are we confident that the courts will take these yes. cases? Yes. I have had a discussion with both of our judges. Uh, you know, we had, had a previous issue with a business owner and both judges recused themselves from that case based on the fact that they both had a connection to that person. And they had to do what was right by law, was recuse themselves. But they both are willing to take these on. Uh, so I've had that discussion with them because I didn't want to end up in a situation where it was going to be remanded to another court and six months was going to go by and, you know, nothing was going to be done. So, okay? All right, that's it for planning and zoning. How we go ahead with the tree commission? Okay, did everybody get the report? So. Yep. Okay, so first thing I want to do is to appoint a new member. Um, Brian Del Pizzo of 20 West Chestnut Street. He sent this letter in a couple of days after our last meeting, so it was kind of late for last month. So did everybody read this letter? I, yep. I'm, I make a motion that we um, appoint Brian Del Pizzo uh, as a member of the Village Tree Commission. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Okay. Congratulations, Brian. Okay, the Tree Commission recommends the following actions to the Village Board. Um, it was agreed to recommend the removal of the large maple on Mill Street. This is the one you just asked me about, Jim, across from the uh, Legion, where one part of it had fallen off onto there. Mm -hmm. So the, the Tree Commission recommends it taken down. That's the one that came down Memorial Day weekend. Right, right. right. So. Um, it's also agreed to recommend the removal of a dying tree at 6 South Street. Um, many wires, the tree will have to be removed professionally. Some of these we're going to try to get Central Hudson to, to take down. 
Um, there's another one at 44 Oak Street. Now this one was in question. Uh, the commission didn't know if it was in the, in the right of way or not, and I went there today. Lisa told me it's 25 feet from the middle of the road, Oak Street, right? So this tree is about 22 and a half feet from the middle of the road, so I think it's in the, in the right of way. So therefore, it's our responsibility. This is um, Here's your micrometer out. If you want to come with me, we, we, we can check it tomorrow. But um, the tree is clearly dead and it's going all the way around the wires. And, and, and there's even a, uh, what are those things called in there? Central Hudson. Wires? No, not wires. The other <laughs> Pulse? The transformer. There's Pulse. a transformer there. So maybe we can get Central Hudson to take this one down. Um, there's other trees that people did not per put permits in, but that the tree commission has, has recognized as being clearly dead, and even Mike Wolf from the highway department has pointed these out. Um, there's one on Catholic Church uh, Plaza, Monsignor Joy Plaza. There's a big dead tree there. When we say Monsignor Joy Plaza, do we mean a road, or do we mean on church property? It's on Am church on property, that? but I believe it's in the right of way. We have to determine if it's in the right of way. Is this one on South Street? Yeah, there's one on South Street right across the street from this one. Yeah. That's clearly in the right of way. All right, we'll have to look at it. Yeah. I know my, I had, Mike and I had looked at one on, uh, on the, in the buffer strip between the road and the sidewalk with dead branches in it. On South Street? No, on Monsignor Joy. Oh, Club. okay. All right. But I'm unclear as to where this tree is. Okay, we'll, we'll look at it. They also recommend removing a dead tree in the mini park on the north park side and another tree in the mini park and they believe that the highway department can take these down, they're not that big. Um, also they recommend taking a, a dead tree down in front of 2123 Livingston Street. Now this one, this was not also not, um, there was not a permit filled out for this one. So what, what is our policy with this? If a neighbor notices a dead tree on somebody else's property. There's two of them here in, in, that are under this circumstance. We talked about it last week. Remove oh, the dead tree in front of 2123 Livingston. That's the one you're talking about? Yeah. And the guy across the street, Jim Edison, was the one who pointed this out. Well, if it's a dead tree and it's in the right of way, it's a safety hazard. Okay. You know? So if it's a public safety issue, we don't have to have an endorsement from the property. Right, but should we notify them? Like these are two these are two out of town people that own these properties. One's in New York City, one's in Hastings on Hudson. Well, like I said, if it's a, if it's a public safety issue, we can just go take the tree down. It's, it's on no. Right. I mean, certainly if you, if you want, we can send a letter to them and notify them we're going to take the tree down. But it's not like we have to have their permission. No, I understand. But as a, a as a courtesy, should we send them a letter saying, "Hey, we took this tree down"? Probably be nice to notify them. There's going to be yeah. some work in their area. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's it on all the trees that we need to take down. So I make a motion that the village board uh, approve taking down these trees. All right, budgeting. Well, uh, <coughs> you have a tree removal money in your budget. Yeah, right? yeah, I know. But and we're going to be using a lot of it. So, yeah. what do we want to put pressure on Central Hudson and try to well, get a couple of these down? Obviously, what I can tell you from my conversations. Uh, with Central Hudson is that if it involves primary lines and they're da in danger of losing the primary lines, they will do some work. They did that black walnut tree. Yeah, they took up the there on Montgomery yeah. Street for us. All right, and they would have taken it all the way to the ground. But I said, well, you know, the black walnut tree, if it's usable, has some value as lumber. So they cut cut it down basically below the wires. If it's secondary lines that are just providing service. They're not going to take the trees down, I can tell you that. So it, it all depends. We call them, we ask them to come take a look. They might say yes, they might say no. But they say the number of trees that they're asked to take down, and this guy I talked to said he covers 80 different communities in the Hudson Valley, and he says we don't have the money to be proactive enough to address all of these tree issues. If it involves, involves the primary lines where it's going to wipe out a whole neighborhood, then they'll come in and do the work. But if it's going to interrupt one house or two houses or three houses, now nah, we'll just come cut the lines off and we'll restore the power. That's how they work. 
Yeah, I know. We, we found that out. But yeah. this one here has a transformer on it on 44 Oak Street. Well, we have to have them look at it. Yeah. And that's just, Mike has to call Pete McFarland at Central Hudson and yeah. have him come take a look. Okay. Okay. I, talk, I talked to Pete for about 45 minutes after our last meeting. Okay? Yep. All right, now what's this last thing here under other? Okay, that was a mistake. Uh, Lisa had given us the wrong, the wrong um, address. That's 50 South Street, but it's 55, 55. so we didn't know where to, where to look. So Cicely's going to go back and look at it and talk to her. What, what is it? Uh, she, needs to, she needs to replace her water line from the main to her house, uh -huh. but the water line goes straight under a village tree. And she really doesn't want to remove the tree, right, so well she wants to take the water line and go around the tree, but at the same point, <coughs> the tree has done damage to the sidewalk. There's, there's Tom is get, aware of this. Yeah, I already need to talk to kick to the Heinz and Tom, and then they need to work with the, the person. And right, Tom's something. already gone and, and looked at it. He, I've already yeah. talked to him about it, but now their issue is, well, moving the the water line, but the tree's done damage to the sidewalk, so she wants to know how Well, it's that two works. separate issues. Right. If the water line is going to be moved, Tommy has to, and Hines have to be involved, and Tommy has to sign off on that. But right. it's not just a matter of installing a new line. The old line also has to be terminated. Mm -hmm. Right. So and it can't cause a problem later she's on. She's talked with Tom about it yeah. already. And then if there's a sidewalk issue, then that's something the tree that's commission right. goes and looks at, looks at the tree, determines whether the tree right. they went stays to go look or goes. At it, but yeah. I gave them the, the address was okay. incorrect, so they're going to go back and, and look at it again right. just for the What's, sidewalk. What, what Tom is aware. 55 South Street. So. Monica, N I E R O. Okay, so I have a motion. Do we have to go I'll through? I'll second the motion. Okay, discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Thank you. Website. Anybody got anything? Nope. Finance and controls. Have we done anything on this cash policy yet that you're aware nope. of? Nope. No. Nothing was. No meeting. Okay. Nothing. All right. Zipper. I will follow up on that. Okay, other business. Resolution for notice of claim. Uh, you want to give everybody a rundown on this? <clears throat> the general municipal law has been amended so that uh, now you can file a notice of claim through the Department of State. Uh, the Department of State, of course, is going to charge a fee for that, $250. If the municipality adopts a resolution designating the Department of State as an agent to accept service of process, you get one half of the fee. So that's the purpose for adopting that resolution and designating the Secretary of State for service of a notice of claim. So I have a resolution here to that effect. Uh, I'll make a motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Everybody? Uh, what's the advantage to yeah, yeah, it can be We're going to get money. <laughs> if oh, a notice of claim is served through the, yeah. through the Secretary of State, and you don't adopt the resolution, the state keeps the $250. If you adopt oh. the resolution, you get half of it. It's not that we're giving up half, we're getting half. You're getting right. half. Yeah. Okay. It's a win-win for us. They're piggybacking on us. <laughs> got it. All right. Yeah. So we got four? Can I help? I'll give you the website tomorrow. You just want to log it in. Okay. Okay. Insurance. Peace. All right. So we reviewed. Still in other business yet? No, not yet. Yeah. Oh. We're on B on the agenda. I left that out there. The yep. okay. Looks like that's that. where we are. Oh, okay. So we reviewed the uh, insurance policies and starting with the, uh, should be an S there, workers count. Um, we're with uh, the New York State Insurance Fund and under that we're in safety group 497, which is administered by a broker and we've been with that since uh, 1996. Um, that group is specific to municipalities and uh, Bill Dowden from Rhinebeck here is um, on the executive committee um, for the group. There are a total of about 100 safety groups and uh, 
there's also additional entities that participate directly with, with the New York State Insurance Fund. Bottom line is it's a huge group of, uh, of uh, insured. Uh, the unique part there is that it is in, uh, fully insured and backed by the state. So um, in order for them to default and it to fall back on the village would have to be, the state would have to default. Uh, part of their uh, package is that they pay dividends, or at least they have for the last 30 years, uh, to the tune of 25%. Um, and you'll see the numbers for, the, we have two policies, one for the village and one for the fire. The village uh, policy is strictly based on the, the payroll um, that they would have to, you know, take care of um, based on a claim. The fire is based on the population that's served. So you see the two numbers around 80 and 1,000 for the village and 45 for fire. Now you have to back, uh, this past year, it came in about 25, but it sh or just below 25 should come uh, a little higher than that, typically. So the estimated costs, assuming we get another 25% uh, dividend, will be about 93,000 for this year, which just started on uh, 1 July. There's a couple alternatives. Uh, to our current uh, plan, and one is the New York State Municipal Workers' Compensation Alliance. This is a self-insured group, but it insures a large, uh, large group of municipalities, and it seems to be growing, taking some of the business from uh, NICEF. Um, and they guarantee no year-end audits, which translates to they're not going to come back and, and tack expenses on at the end of the year. You're, your quote is what you're going to pay. Um, just to note that the town switched to them last year, and as far as I know, they're they're happy with it. So that that for this year would have been seventy six thousand. So clearly there's there's a savings. Um, another alternative would be uh, the Dutchess County Group, which is just being open to municipalities. They have a handful on there. I don't have a quote for them. Uh, they're also self insured, but they're you know, to note, that's a small, very small group of... Uh, that's what Molinari talked about. Yeah, that, when we went to that seminar, that's what mm -hmm. they talked about. And I talked to her uh, just yesterday, Rebecca White again. When are they going to come out with some idea of what the cost is going to be? Well, I didn't put forth a quote there because we just renewed on July 1. And what happens is it's very cost prohibitive to switch unless you wait until... Your, your time is up. You pay all kinds of penalties to get out of your current policy. Mm -hmm. So, and it's based on time. You know, if you switch a month before, it's not so much. But if you switch 11 and a half months before, you're going to pay probably to the tune that would make it not worth it to make the change now. So we are now with, with item number one insured? That's or, that's what we have now. We're done yep. for this year. And the, that, uh, that, that ends when? June. 30th next year. of next year. next year. Just started. And when, yeah. we get the, when do we get the dividend? The dividends get paid out, I believe. Um, we won't see the dividend until January, I think it is, for the year that just ended on uh, 30 June. So, we so that they have six to... Six months later. Yeah. yeah, they do all their... The, over the next few months, they do all their computations and figure out their losses across their... Uh, so if you were to switch here in uh, next year, yeah, we would still get a dividend six months later from, from this current year? I'm assuming, yeah, I'm assuming you get the dividend based on the year that you were, you were in. I don't think... Yeah, you should. Yeah. Um, as far as the county group, uh, we have to provide them with information in order to get a cost estimate because yeah. they need to see our payrolls, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. That's, he's set up here in the, the uh, top part. For the village, the premium that we pay is based on payroll. Mm -hmm. So the county group would do the same thing. They would base it on what our payroll was and see that what happens, what he's talking about with NIMR, with no audit, mm -hmm. what happens is the state insurance fund every year then asks you to give them your payrolls for the prior year. And then they audit your payrolls. And as long as you've reported your payrolls accurately, you don't pay any additional money. But if you made a mistake or if your payroll increased and you were paying a lesser premium than you should have been, then they assess you. And I'm not sure about the, uh, you know, I had the most lengthy presentation from, from NICEF, uh, but
but the way they work is they do a three-year look back. So actually the village apparently five years ago, four or five years ago, had a bad year in terms of comp. So our rates uh, just went down because we, you know, we dropped a bad year off the back end. So we've had three good ones and the others may, you know, probably fo follow a similar uh, pattern, mm -hmm. I would assume. So that, that gets adjusted. Yeah, insurance companies don't like yeah. paying out. So we, when are we going to make a decision? Uh, next just, year. We're, yeah, we're not making a decision on anything now. So the, the recommendation is, you know, we kind of got on this a little late this year. Um, it wasn't really time to, to put forth the change. Yeah, so it should go in the budget process about 90 days out. We should start looking at it, and that would give us time to, you know, get multiple quotes and bring it here before the board. But just to give you an idea what we're what we're looking at, and then the um, the liability that we currently have through Trident, which is through Farley and Raycal, um, and just to note there that we they've had claims, we've been with them for two years, and they, you know, we've had some claims with them um, related to the sidewalk. So we've seen our seen our rates go up there. Uh, the alternatives to that. That's a much wider market because, uh, you know, workman's comp is based on payroll. The liability is kind of like car insurance. They can change your, you know, deductibles and your coverage amounts a lot. So your, your premiums can can change significantly there. But we and currently... how many tickets you get? What's that? And how many tickets you get or faults you have? Exactly. So your claim history is, is critical there. Um, the one which kind of started this whole thing was uh, Brian Miles from the Spain agency. We had that email about Nimer, um, and that is a liability policy. But we weren't—they have all the information, but we're not able to get a quote from them yet because we have a pending um, letter from the DEC regarding the dam, which they've made some recommendations. But until we have a response to that letter, they won't quote us. That one started. Uh, June 1st, and the same situation exists where, you know, it's beneficial to wait until the renewal date um, to switch, otherwise you're going to pay penalties that, that are going to hurt you in, in the meantime. But that, there's plenty of places, you know, you could get a lot of different places could quote. The place that does um, NYSIF, Glad Filter Group, they can also do, uh, give us a quote on, on the liability. A Glad Filter would be they're associated with the Dowden agency as well. Um, so we would need to, same time, you know, it's six, uh, 30 days apart. So in the budget process next year, we can work on both of those, but in, you know, we should address um, the extra dam. And well, it's nice that you're driving this. What's that? It's very nice that you are driving this. Yeah, try to re remember yeah. this next February. When we'll we see. Got we got to get through March in. first. Right? Yeah. He doesn't. He doesn't forget anything he remembers, Alec. Oh, that's know. right. Yeah. <laughs> um, one add-on uh, on there <laughs> is we good. do uh, the fire department Inc. has a policy, a supplemental accident and disability for the um, volunteer firefighters, which gives them additional coverage uh, in the event of uh, death or disability, and that's a three-year um, term there, which is coming up. Um, in January, but we pay 25% of that premium, which... We, we pay 50%. We, we pay do? half. Oh. It's split. We pay half. Okay, so my number is half what it should be? Yeah. Okay, so that that means we should get half the say, and, you know, we'll request them to get maybe three Shop quotes so, to make sure that we're getting the best uh, mm -hmm. best price when it, when it moves forward. That it? That's it. So yeah. that one we have to look at in probably. Yeah, October. that one's that yeah. one's coming up in January, and yeah, I'll talk to them about them it. in the fall. Yeah, because they hold the policy, and we just make a payment on it. So right. it's going to be up to them to do it. We'll see what happened. Was a few years back when Wayne was liaison, they had a policy, and then they increased it, and we agreed to pay half of that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hey, thanks for all your work on this. It's a pretty comprehensive look that you took at everything and uh, definitely positions us better for next year when we go into the budget process. Good job. 
Well, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, yeah. More other business. Yeah, I uh, just have a question here. What has oh, happened? Huh? Yeah, no, no, no. No? No, it's What's your question? question? Well, the question is, uh, in, in the water department, uh, we are in need of some updated equipment. And I was informed by Lisa that uh, the town is going for a, uh, a grant. The and town and the village. And the village. Are in that grant in that together. Grant together. And I haven't heard any... Updates on that? that it's been submitted. It's been submitted. No update. Time. It was yeah. just submitted the end of June. It had, to be, it had to be submitted by the 27th it's of it. June. And it was submitted. And basically the upgrades for this building would involve seven new computers and some printers, and yeah. et cetera. So Not just for this building, but I think even on the water plant too. No, just this building. Okay, so what, can I go out and buy them for myself? You need to put a plan building? together and come to the board with it if you want to okay. do something. Well, yeah. I was waiting. I thought it was part of this year, and, and you're saying it is not. No, okay. nothing for like the wastewater what plant, or the physical okay. plants. Okay. The wastewater department downstairs and the water department downstairs, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's just the administration. It's the administration, administration. part of it. Okay. Yeah. So I have and to basically, the way it is, Heinz, is it. It would, there would be a fiber optic cable between the two buildings. Yeah. There would be a server over at the town hall that would be shared, but it would all be, of course, encrypted. Right. You know, uh, So okay. the grant has been submitted, and uh, uh, we just have to wait for the review process and notification, whether we get it or not. Okay. Is that it? Yeah. Correspondence. We have received on June 24th a letter from Re Rebuilding Together Dutchess County. Uh, and this is the program that, you know, it's a not-for-profit organization that helps low-income homeowners do home repairs. Uh, and there's, the information is here. I'll give it to Lisa. So if there's anybody out there in TV land that uh, uh, is interested in finding out more about rebuilding together, uh, they can ask Lisa for the information. Uh, we had received some correspondence from a film group. That wants to do, they're doing a movie. I want to be in it. Excuse me? I want to be in it. Contact them. Tell them you want to be an extra. You're already a grumpus, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Center All right. So uh, they've made a request to uh, uh, use some space here in the municipal parking lot. They're talking about 12, 12 spots. And it basically, Lisa, it's along this side over here, correct? Yeah. You know, this first row when you go in. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to use it from 2 in the afternoon until 12, and then they're going to do some shoots on the street. And what we had suggested to them was that they get to, if they're going to park a vehicle, that they talk to the business owner where they're going to park the vehicle in front of and make sure they're okay with the fact that they're going to do that. So they had contacted Peter over at Iconic Air, and Peter said no problem. And they're making contact with Casarinos for that side, right? Mm -hmm. Which is Bob Joffe's old... Right. Barbershop. So uh, uh, basically, I guess we just need a, to make a motion here to yeah. approve this. Okay. Well, when do you so start again? I'm, I'm going to make a motion to approve it. August 7th. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. Are you trying to move it? Is? I have no idea. No. They shoot all the time here. Oh, they do. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's right. They've, I think this is done... the same group that's been down the gardens, isn't it? Yeah, they've, they've done. Last year they were here, the year before they were here. Yeah, I think they, are they the ones that just did the vampire thing at the gardens? I think so. There was a, yeah. a film crew at the, vamp at the gardens doing a vampire film. These are, you said, for all the time. When? Vampires. August. Right. August are, are they planning on blocking August the parking South. lot, Foster's ball, the parking lot over there? I know they're going to be next to the, next door no, to the barbershop. No, it's going to be the space in front of the hair salon. Just there, that's it. That's what I was told. Okay. That's what they, that's from their emails. That's what they're saying. Peter's given them the, the approval to park in the spot in front of his shop. Right. You said August the second. Seventh. Seventh. <clears throat> so we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Any other correspondence, Lisa? That's all I have. 
Okay, water and sewer adjustments. What do you got, Heinz? Well, uh, I was an eager beaver last month, and the Lisa sort of uh, stopped me. And uh, because of that, I have nothing to report except, <laughs> except good, good job, news. Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> except good news. Uh, we have uh, 12 new accounts uh, that, uh, during the month of June and four new uh, taps uh, in the garden. And the 12 new accounts, this is just like a person buying a, buying house, a house and switching over. So, so, so. There was actually, speaking of that, there was good news on the radio this morning that uh, there's been an increase in the number of real estate closings, and hopefully this is going to be a spike in our mortgage yeah, tax revenue. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. How many Twelve? taps? No, I've got four. Thank you. So you don't have any adjustments on? No adjustments, no. Okay. Already made them. Thank you. All right. Next month. <laughs> So, vouchers are ready to be approved downstairs, and I need a motion to go to executive session for personnel matters. Can I go back to one uh, a highway question? Yeah, sure. sure. The, uh, <laughs> the bridge down, just yeah. downstream of, on Route 9, south of... Yes. Uh, By the Legion Park. Yes. Yes. Just down from Amsterdam. Yes. Any news on that? Did you happen to... We, we talked about the, there's a railing that was pulled out probably during a, a hurricane and it's kind of there's unsafe. That, there's a big drop off there. Well, there's yeah. that one brace that isn't attached. Right. Yeah. I checked the railing. The railing's not loose. The railing's good right. and solid. Okay, but it's the transition of the railing where it comes down on both sides, actually. There's just like kind of big voids that are. Why don't you and I get together and we'll go down and take a look at it? And you can run it by me what you're thinking. All right. Okay. Perfect. All right. And I have a question: Is that would that be under the highway department to maintain? I mean, to paint that bridge there because it's, no, it's like a, is I that don't a state think so. bridge. Uh, it's a DOT bridge. Uh, as far as the maintenance of the sidewalk part of it, that I think would be our responsibility. The railing, I don't know if that's considered the superstructure yeah. of the bridge, or we'd have to find out. Well, that's been the question because question. it's the actual pedestrian bridge is there's a space between it right. and the road. So, yeah. yeah. So, do you want to say something about that? Oh, yeah. I'd like to uh, uh, take a moment. Uh, Bob Winnie, who was a village attorney, I completely forgot about that. Thanks for reminding yeah. me. He had passed away uh, actually on July 4th. And Bob was 89 years old, served as a village attorney for 50 years. Uh, was very involved in the community over those years, uh, great community servant. Uh, I know he was a big, big mentor to me when I got involved in village government. Uh, taught me a lot, uh, you know, about how to conduct business and the way you should uh, uh, run meetings and those types of things. And uh, I just want to take the opportunity to thank Bob personally for everything he did for me. And I would like to ask everybody to please stand and I'll offer a moment of silence in Bob's memory. Thank you. Rest in peace, my friend. You got 50 years, Rich. We'll see we 48 minutes. <laughs> Catch up to him. <laughs> he can't even say he's a short timer. <laughs> okay. Do you did you have any comments you wanted to make tonight? Come up to the microphone, please, Kate. I'm Kate Long. I live at 86 Montgomery. Um, I, as I mentioned in previous meetings, I'm employed by Reuters, an international news agency, to write the, about the municipal bond market. So I have a lot of experience in that area. And I've been in communication with um, HealthQuest, um, David Ping, about the nonprofit status of the hospital. Because he had made um, several references to the fact um, that, well, we, we were in discussion about for profit leasing of the hospital space. And um, he made, well, I've been emailing, and he said that they, in fact, the um, for profits that leased space at, at Northern Duchess were paying property taxes. So I went through the property rules and discovered that, in fact, none of them were. And um, 
So in responding to him and saying that he said he would have the CFO of HealthQuest and um, the facilities manager address the issue. So that's where we are. And this is related to the proposed addition and um, sort of just generally the tax status of the property. Um, so if you have we any other questions. <laughs> we certainly appreciate your uh, uh, diligence in this and certainly are interested to hear what your uh, uh, findings are. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I've written about it nationally on the national level and stuff. So it's just sort of a reflection of things that are, you know, going on across the country sure. about um, communities questioning the income of um, properties that are not on their tax rolls f are having exemptions, so. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I need a motion to uh, go to executive session for personnel go. matters, please. I want to make a motion to go to uh, executive session to discuss some personnel matters. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Yeah. Excuse me? Yes. We shouldn't be too long. We good? I need a motion to resume regular session, please. I make a motion to resume uh, regular session. Second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Is there any other business anybody wants to discuss? Okay, I need a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. He's seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. So voted.